if you're new here, feel free to click the subscribe button I post every Thursday, or also give this video a thumbs up if this seems interesting to you. But today's video is surrounded by a holiday that will be happening next Wednesday that I am super excited for. I haven't celebrated it in a while, but that is Cinco de Mayo. I grew up uh, surrounded by a community that celebrated it, and it was so much fun. There's so much good food, so much uh, culture and love for people. And so, yeah, Cinco de Mayo is a Mexican holiday, and it basically, uh, for those of you who don't know, is when the Mexican army defeated the French army, and that is really great for them. So here are some book recommendations, either by Mexican authors or set in Mexico, or somehow tied to Mexico for you guys to put on your TVRs as Cinco de Mayo is coming up. So here are some Cinco de Mayo recommendations. The first one, of course, I had to go with was going to be Mexican Gothic, and this is by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and this is more of a horror kind of thriller book. Um, I know there are a couple of horror readathons happening right now, um, so this would also be great for one of those. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, Mexican Gothic is about a woman whose sister newly weds an English man and they move to the countryside. And one day she gets this frantic letter from her sister saying, you know, things aren't going well, she's in trouble, she needs someone to go help her. So the main character goes to the big estate in the countryside to help her sister and then a whole bunch of suspicious things start happening and she's just not sure what to do or how to react or how to help. The next one is Paula Santiago and the River of Tears and this was written by Tethlarque Mejia. Mejia? Mejia? I'm so sorry. Uh, but this is a book that was presented by Rick Riordan and it kind of follows like a Mexican mythology-esque. It talks about um, this girl who has two friends and her mother is very superstitious and so Paola, the main character, and her friends would always meet by the river against her mother's wishes until one day her friend goes missing and she's like, we need to find them because the police aren't going to and this is not the first children disappearance to happen around this river. So she goes on this magical journey to find out what is happening to these children and why and how she can stop it. I loved this book. When I read it, I read it over audiobook and I just flew right through it. The next one on this list is I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter and this is by Erica L. Sanchez and this is a really interesting um, contemporary as the main character Julia and her family grow up in Chicago and she has her sister Olga who kind of is the perfect Mexican daughter you know she does what everybody wants her to do she follows the traditions uh, however Julia is not so inclined she wants to leave her family and go to college and kind of live more of an American lifestyle and not really she's not really considered your perfect Mexican daughter and then her sister Olga passes away in an unfortunate accident, I believe. And some secrets start to come up about Olga that may start to diminish her reputation and her image. And so Julia goes to investigate that and try and lift up her sister's memory to be exactly what it should have been rather than what it was. Also, sorry if you can hear like creaking or typing in the background, my husband is working on his final as it is finals week, so just ignore the little background noise. Moving on, the next book that I want to talk about is Like Water for Chocolate, and this is Vera Esquivel, and this was a book originally written in Spanish and was a huge bestseller in Mexico and then also has been translated into English and is even a bestseller here in the States, which is super cool. And so this book is about Tita, who is the youngest daughter in the De La Garza family, and it is her responsibility to, to not get married, but to watch after her abuela and her mother and her family. But she ends up falling in love with a man, and he loves her back, and so he decides that he's going to marry her sister Rosaura, and that's how he can stay close to Tita is by still marrying into the family even if it's not the sister that he loves. And so I assume there's going to be a whole bunch of like family drama and ooh, it just sounds so good to me. 
And also, it because he's a cook, it sounds like there's gonna be so many delicious food descriptions, and I am here for it. This next one is a recent release, and it's called Somewhere Between Bitter and Sweet, and it is by Kan Kia Kemp. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, but this is about a girl who wants to open her own pastelaria next to her father, her family's really, uh, Nacho Taco Shop, and she is kind of struggling with the whole, um, you know, pursuing her dreams and not necessarily taking over the family business and she wants to kind of follow her own path and I believe a big secret is revealed that kind of shakes everyone a little bit um, but one of the new hires at her father's restaurant we also follow him quite a bit as he is dealing with immigration status and some secrets of his own and then there I believe starts the love story and it sounds like such a good book and it was very recently released so I have not yet gotten a chance to get it and read it but it just it sounds like so much fun and again with the food thing there's starting to be a food theme here and it, it just all sounds delicious moving on I'm going to talk about the labyrinth lost and this is by Soreda Cordova Cordova and this is a fantastical magical um, story that I believe was also translated to English although I'm not completely sure if it was first written in Spanish but it is about this daughter named Alex and she is supposed to be the next powerful bruja in her family which bruja means like witch kind of like sorcerer type thing um, but she doesn't really want to be a bruja she that's that's not her thing so when her death day comes and it's time for her ceremony and ritual, she performs a spell that is supposed to get rid of her power. However, it kind of backfires and her entire family disappears. And she's like, oh crap, what did I just do? And the only one left to help her is Nova, who is a bruja, who she is not excited to work with, but she needs to get her family back somehow. And so it follows that journey and how and it really looks at the themes of family and like a lot of these books follow the theme of family but that's family is so important so like why not it, it's great and then the last book that I'm going to talk to you guys about today is called the storm runner and this is also presented by Rick Riordan but it is written by JC Cervantes and this is actually my current read I am 92% of the way done with the book and I'm going to finish it today and I am super excited to finish it. It more so follows Mayan mythology and our main character is actually born and raised in New Mexico in the States rather than like actually in Mexico. But he does have Mexican heritage, I believe, and like Mayan heritage. Um, and I just thought it'd be a fun book to add in here as it still celebrates Central American culture and uh, mythology and it's really cool so it's about this kid who has one leg that's quite a bit shorter than the other so he needs to walk around with a cane and he finds out that he's not exactly human and that he's in some prophecy to you know release the god of like darkness and death and decay and name a pooch and um he's like i don't want to do that and then he goes and does it anyway um and I will probably talk more about this book in a recent reads video whenever I do one of those, whenever I finally finish some of the books that I've been reading, um, because with classes I've kind of been putting reading a little bit on the back burner. Um, but yeah, so that'll be coming, but The Storm Runner. So it's a very fun book and he has to figure out how to then destroy the god that he had released uh, just a day or so beforehand and stop the world from crumbling. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. I'm definitely seeing a lot of similarities between this book and Percy Jackson, which was not really the case with Barla Santiago. Like that was a very different independent book. Um, so it's been interesting. It's been fun. There you go. There are some Mexican authors and setting recommendations for Cinco de Mayo coming up this coming Wednesday and so I am I won't be able to celebrate very much because we're still you know kind of in a lockdown-ish quarantine but I hope you guys if you do celebrate you have a wonderful Cinco de Mayo if you don't maybe you 
learn something or you just want to read some Mexican reads to support those authors and that culture. But like I said, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I post every Thursday and I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also feel free to comment down below if there are any uh, books written by Mexican, uh, Mexican authors or with Mexican main characters or set in Mexico for some chunk of the book that I don't know about. I would love for you to comment them down below and then also just comment really anything if we want to chat for anything bookish. Um, but until I see you guys in my next video, I wish you all a happy reading.